Welcome to another edition of the SSC TV3 News. We are more than news. We also televise programs, events, and archives that are the lifeblood of our community. And we've been doing this for more than 40 years. <clears throat> Today is Friday, April 26, 2019, and I'm Jim Lakey, your host, and these are our features that will be on our show today. First, Community Service Day Part 1, then Community Service Day Part 2, and finally, Gone, but not for long. We televise this program live at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays and Fridays and upload it to YouTube right after the show. If you can't watch us live, you can still watch the show at your convenience at ssctv3.org. Please share our news with features and programming on your social media. This will help us grow and enable us to serve you better. We also welcome press releases. Just bring them by the studio or send them to ssctv3 <coughs> at gmail.com. If you would like to be a sponsor of our news or governmental telecast, come by the studio and we'll set you up. Your, ad your advertisement will run both on the TV news and the TV bulletin board. Here now are some of our sponsors. Please let them know that you appreciate their support for our local channel. Well, this week <clears throat> we're having both of the best days in our weather report at opposite ends of the weather. So Saturday is the best day of the week, and it's going to be windy on Saturday, 71 the high, 37 the low. Then on Sunday it'll be windy some more, 64 the high and 47 the low. On Monday, cloudy, 60 the high, and 40 the low. And then our coolest day, a thunderstorm is due on Tuesday, 53 the high, and 39 the low. Then we start going back up. Wednesday, partly cloudy, 66 the high, and 47 the low. Thursday, cloudy. 68 the high, 44 the low, and then finding up the end of the week with another great day. Friday will be partly cloudy, 72 the high, and 50 the low. <clears throat> and we can uh, give you the lunches as uh, far as we've gotten news of them, and that's on Monday, hamburger steak with potato wedges, and on Tuesday, taco salad with tortilla chips. And we don't quite have the menu for the rest of the week. It probably hasn't been printed yet. Well, uh, we only have one birthday this week. So on Thursday, a very happy birthday to Jerry Hathaway. The annual Community Service Day was Wednesday, Little Hands and Big Hands, lend helping hands to make our fair city a little fairer.
addition to the actual work being done for the citizens of St. John and Hudson, there was for the students the added benefit of ownership, participation, and community pride. Due to a scheduling conflict, TV3 was not able to get a video of the kindergarten and preschool in action as was planned. The following slideshow is of the upper grade school students as they worked in and around the school. Now we have some school announcements. Dan Danton Hilton has been hired as the new USD 350 Recreation Commission Program Director. Danton is a 2010 graduate of St. John High School and has been an IT director and a coach with the Attica School District. He will begin his new position at the end of May, and will be joined by his wife, Brittany, and his son, Bronson. <clears throat> St. John Hudson USD 350 is seeking applications for the position of administrative assistance for the high school office. The position is full-time from August through June with paid health benefits. The official start date is August 1st. 2019, but training may begin before that time. To get an application, contact the city office at 620-549-3564 or the school website at usd350.com. Applications should be submitted to the district office or can be emailed to FISHERA at USD350.com. The deadline for applications is April 30. <clears throat> the PTO Carnival Prep. The PTO Carnival, which is held every other year, will be tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m in the main gym. There will be games, bouncy houses, face painting, jail, and more. Tickets will be 25 cents each and can be purchased at the carnival. Popcorn, cotton candy, chips, pop, and water will also be available for purchase in the commons area. Here now is a list of a few more of our sponsors. Please let them know that you appreciate their support of both our local channel and our community.
And now we have some public service announcements. The Salsa Contest is making its comeback for the 2019 St. John Jubilee. Special thank yous go to Misty Dawn Newell and her staff at Kenwood Plaza for helping ed execute this part of the event. Registration forms are at the city office. Judging will begin on Saturday, May 25th at 10 a.m. For those interested in the shirt recently auctioned off by the Jubilee Gals, there is good news. Kathleen Norman, the designer of the shirt, is coordinating with the city to put together a fundraiser to benefit the Jubilee Fund. The, sh the shirt is $30, and $10 from each sale goes to the Jubilee Fund. The shirt is currently available in the following sizes. Three smalls, one medium, one large, three extra large, and two double extra large. If there's enough interest, another order could be placed. To pre-order, contact the Jubilee Gals. If you would like to purchase one of the available shirts, Stop by the city office while the supplies last. <clears throat> it's that time of year again, and mowing season has begun. This is a friendly reminder that yards need to be maintained in a timely manner, and that grass is not to exceed nine inches. Also, yard clippings do not go into the street. The city of St. John is in an open burn status. However, those wishing to burn are still required to call Stafford County Dispatch at 620-549-3247 to get the current wind speed, location, and what is to be burned. <clears throat> the new sounds are up at the city dumpster. They explain a lot. If, however, you have questions about items not covered by the signs, give the city a call. Items that may not be placed in the dumpster are leaves, grass, shrubs, trees, and branches. These must go to the tree dump east of town. <coughs> The annual rabies clinic is in the books, and the city of St. John would like to remind you that your animals need their city tags. Please come to the city office with your proof of current rabies vaccinations to get them. <clears throat> Before you consider new construction, contact the county appraiser's office at 620-549-3540 to take advantage of the Neighborhood Revitalization Program. For more information, visit staffordecodevo.com slash neighborhood-revitalization. The Stafford County Wetlands and Wildlife National Science Byway Committee invites you to a ceremonial ribbon cutting for the new signage and rest area on Highway 50 in Stafford County. This will take place on Friday, May 24th at 10 a.m. The Stafford County Board of Commissioners is now accepting applications for an assistant fire director slash EMT. The job description and application are available at the Stafford County Clerk's Office at 209 North Broadway in St. John. The telephone number is 620-549-3509. <clears throat> Tomorrow is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. With the help of the St. John Police Department, 
Stafford County will be holding a prescription drug take-back event at the Stafford County Annex from 10 to, no to noontime, 10 a.m. to noontime noon tomorrow. Please feel free to bring in any unused or expired medications that you have. Also, remember the second half of property taxes are due by Friday, May 10th. You may pay them in person or in line at kansas.gov slash property tax. <clears throat> White's Food Liner is looking for an enthusiastic and motivated worker in the deli department. This job is part-time, possibly full-time, with varying working hours starting as early as 6 o'clock in the morning and ending as late as, late as 8 o'clock in the evening. The job includes frying, serving customers, stocking the cold cases, and cleaning the food preparation areas. The pay rate is negotiable depending on the level of experience. Apply online at whitesfoodliner.com slash home slash employment. <clears throat> Crafting classes are in the second Wednesday of each month. Call the library at 620-549-3227 to register. Materials are prepared in advance, so the library needs a good count of those who plan to attend. Classes are free to registered library card holders. The Ida Long Goodman Memorial Library has received its shipment of the 2019 Big Kansas Road Trip Guides. If you're planning to do some traveling, this is a handy guide to take with you. <clears throat> the Jubilee Gals are busy planning, scheduling, and working hard to make this year's Jubilee a success. The following is a quote they posted on Facebook. It is April, and the 2019 St. John Jubilee will be there before we know it. Remember, these events all happen with the help and support from each and every one of us. All of your donations are greatly appreciated. We are still trying to reach our goal. Help us reach our goal and become a sponsor today. <clears throat> also, the Jubilee Gals are turning Fridays into auction days for Jubilee fundraising. Every Friday, they will have an item or items from businesses to auction off to the highest bidder by 3 p.m. each Friday. <clears throat> Bids must be submitted on the original post. The St. John Jubilee will be May 24th and 25th. The theme for this year is Live It Up. Outdoor vendor spaces are now being reserved. Check with the city office for an application. Also, by going to Facebook on the Around the Square page, you can leave your email address and get more information and get an application. Jubilee sponsor packets have been sent out. <clears throat> if you didn't get one, you can still donate. This is not just for businesses. Any amount helps the Jubilee to continue. If you can't make a monetary donation and you still want to help, contact the city office at 620-549-3208. Cornhole is making a comeback. If you plan to participate, you need to register by May 22nd so the bracket can be set up. Dave Lewis, the voice of the, witch, of the Wildcats, will be helping with Friday night trivia such that follows the USD 350 art auction. The West Crossman Band will be the live entertainment Friday night at the Beer Garden which opens at 6 p.m. The band will begin playing after the trivia, 
somewhere between 9 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Registration forms are now available for the second annual Jubilee Burnout Contest to be held on Saturday, May 25th, starting at 2.30 p.m. The cost is $20 to register. Also, if you would like to be a judge, give the Jubilee gals a shout. They will be needing five judges this year. Forms are available at City Hall or can be picked up at the Jubilee at the information booth, booth until noon. <clears throat> there are still 18 spots left for the Monster Truck Sponsors. $100 gets you 25 tickets. At the city office, get yours today. The city is compiling a more accurate landlord list. There are a number of people looking for rentals. Please contact the city if you would like to be on the landlord list. Also, please contact the city if you currently have properties that are available for rent. The city of St. John is accepting applications for the position of public utilities maintenance worker. For a copy of the job description and or job application, call the city office during business hours at 620-549-3208 or visit stjohnkansas.com. This position will be under the supervision of the public utilities supervisor and overseen by the city superintendent. The city of St. John is an equal opportunity employer. There are three city council seats that are up for election this year. Jim Doran, Ryan Christie, and Marshall Sanders. Also, there are four school board positions up for election this year. Derek Foote, Chad Fisher, Darren Brunner, and Debbie Waddle. If you're interested in running, you need to register by June 3rd. TV3 will run political advertising and host interviews on location in our studio. To help you get your message out, the TV3 bulletin board is also available for your message. Stop by at East 110 East 3rd Street here in St. John or call us at 620-549-6351 or send us an email at ssctv3 at gmail.com. <clears throat> A friendly reminder from the city is that golf carts and UTVs need to be registered and tagged through the city office. Golf carts need to be tagged and UTVs need permits. For those of you wondering what happened to our fountain, it is undergoing major repairs. It will be back in place as soon as possible. Monday morning, our city crew, along with Salee Tree Service, began the delicate task of removing our city fountain for repairs. Realizing that many of us regard this fountain as valuable as anything in the Smithsonian, they double and triple checked every move and proceeded with surgical precision. One of the workers remarked, if we break this, we might as well leave town. You will see in a few minutes what took several painstaking hours to complete.
In the afternoon, it was time for some serious muscle. Please help our channel better serve you <coughs> with quality and quantitative informative programming. We have a lot of good stuff happening in our area, and our goal is to bring these activities to those who can't afford, uh, who can't attend. <coughs> if you have items that need to be announced on TV3, or you have an event that would benefit from video coverage, we would like to hear from you. Send us your items or video requests to ssctv3 at gmail.com. Give us a little lead time and we'll be there. Join us again next Tuesday at 11 a.m. for another edition of the TV3 News. Keep us informed and we will keep you informed. And thank you for watching.